This video, my friends, is not another how-to video for learning to handstand. There are already enough of these videos from people who certainly are better at this skill than I am. Instead, this is about my journey of overcoming my pride, connecting the dots and doing the work to hold my handstand for 60 seconds consistently. And hopefully it will give you also some insights and inspiration to improve your practice as well. For me, the handstand was always a fundamental skill for controlling my body. It was a symbol for body control and balance. Although in reality, countless other skills show prowess in body control and balance, it was the handstand that held this image in my mind. So unlocking this skill has been a goal since my early childhood days. So my mother put me in a local gymnastics center and early on I learned to hand balance, flip invert and many things more. After about two years we relocated to a different place where they didn't have a, a gymnastics center and yeah I stopped my gym, gym classes. But in my mind however I was already a handstand professional because I did it better than 90% of my friends. And this was pre-Instagram and YouTube where I could compare myself to other really good people. Fast forward 20 years, I was for fun challenging a friend who of us could hold a handstand longer. I don't know who won, I think I probably lost, but the shocking news was that I only could barely hold my handstand for about 10 seconds. Only 10 seconds. As a former gymnast, I was shocked. So on that day, I set myself a goal that I would be able to one day hold my handstand for 60 seconds. My handstand routine wasn't solid at that time. So I occasionally practiced for five to 10 minutes, trying to hold my handstand as long as possible. Needless to say that I progressed very slowly. Here and there, I reached 30 seconds after a year of practice, but most of the time I lost balance after around 20 seconds or so. Additionally, I also had to pause my handstand practice quite often because my wrists would get injured because I wasn't practicing properly. I even started to doubt if handstand practice wouldn't put too much stress on my wrists um, in the long term. After all, I'm already in my 30s. But then luckily I was introduced to the movement culture and the Ido Portal method. And so what other people could achieve in a very short time. People who didn't have any form of gymnastics or sports experience at all, old and young, would be able to move better in a fraction of the time that I invested in my practice. And I was a former gymnast, at least in my mind. Actually, I wasn't that good, but uh, I had this distorted perspective in my mind because I was comparing myself or my skills with the wrong people. And this belief and my pride were one reason, one of the main reasons why I progressed so slowly. More on this in a moment. Next, I want to share with you what I learned once I joined the movement culture and got proper guidance on my handstand practice. For me, using the wall in my handstand practice was a sign of weakness. I had this distorted belief in my mind that I was a former gymnast and therefore I wouldn't need the wall. So in my mind, the wall was for people who were afraid to fall over and couldn't do a freestanding handstand yet. Once I got rid of this mindset and started to work with the wall more often, I progressed really fast. There are two main reasons why this happened. The first reason is that the handstand is more than just keeping the balance. Especially if you want to hold it for 60 seconds or longer, it's also about endurance. I was so fixated on keeping the balance and reaching the 60 second mark that I missed a simple equation. If I cannot hold a solid handstand for one minute over several sets on the wall, why should I be able to do it freestanding where keeping the balance would tire my muscles even more? Building a foundation of handstand endurance was vital on my way to reaching my goal of a 60 second freestanding handstand. But I had to let go of my pride and take a step backward. The second reason for using the wall is a question 
of attention, or in other words, of atten attention allocation. When learning a skill, we need our sensory system. We need to allocate our attention to something. Using the wall also took the biggest variable out of the equation, keeping the balance. That meant my mind was free to focus on other things like my body line and pushing tall through my sole shoulders. I always thought that my form was good, but once I had the headspace for proprioception because I wasn't occupied by keeping the balance, I suddenly noticed everything that wasn't right. As an example, I realized that I could elevate my shoulders a lot more and by that straighten my thoracic body line. I also noticed that I was arching my lower back instead of having a posterior pelvis tilt. Once I accepted the wall as a friend or as an essential tool for my handstand practice and once I got rid of my pride of using the wall, I started to get results pretty quickly. I also saw many people making the same mistakes as I did in other fields. So putting your ego aside and take a step backwards often lead to faster progressions. After injuring my wrists, I asked myself what I could do differently to prevent that. I kind of always accepted uh, that I shouldn't stress my joints too much and always attributed wrong movements or overtraining as a cause of my injuries. But Ido Portal once said something that shifted my perspective on this matter. And he said that there are no bad movements, there's only a lack of awareness and a lack of preparation. As a consequence, I implemented mobility work for wrists, elbows and shoulders into my handstand practice. And I want to make a clear distinction between mobility work and conventional warm-up routines that I find are basically useless. In a nutshell, here are some ideas of mobility exercises for my handstand practice. Hang on a bar or rings and try to relax your whole body except your grip. Wrist flexion raises. Push your body vertically upward by flexing your wrists. Descend in a controlled way. Reversed wrist push-ups. Slowly descend into a reversed wrist push-up position and then push yourself up again. After doing these mobility exercises regularly, I truly felt like my wrists were coming out of a wheelchair. I can honestly say that I have never had stronger joints and ligaments than I have today. And of course, that doesn't mean that I will never get injured again, but it definitely means that I'm better prepared to a much bigger spectrum of movements and loads that I can or my joints can handle. And having good and healthy joints is not only beneficial for your handstand practice, of course, it's transfers to other fields as well, like my strength work sessions or martial art practice or my locomotion. Or just for everyday life. Now, I'm gonna tell you my secret. A perfect plan doesn't bring you the results if you don't do the work. Yep. So for me, the five to 10 minutes of handstand practice that I fitted in between other things that I did didn't bring me much closer to my goal of holding this freestanding handstand for 60 seconds at all. Yes, a short practice may be sufficient if you want to maintain a skill, but it wasn't enough um, for acquiring a new skill like a 60 second freestanding hold. So for me that meant to take my goal seriously and to make it a priority. And that meant putting in more work. It seems that the saying that it takes 10,000 hours to master a skill isn't very accurate, scientifically speaking. What exactly does work mean? Is it more time, more repetition, more intensity? Andrew Huberman, a Stanford professor for neurology and ophthalmology, explained that the key factors for skill learning are repetitions and errors or slash frustration. 
and not time itself. So what opens the door for neuroplasticity, the, the brain's and nervous system's ability to change in response of, of experience or errors. So by doing as many repetitions per unit of time and allowing myself to make errors, I can learn a skill faster. But how does this translate to my handstand practice? After all, I can't make the 60 seconds tick faster to fit in more repetitions in that time. So let's take a closer look on this matter. Let's break down the handstand practice and see what skill is needed for each part. Overall, there's two parts. The coming up into a handstand and the hold of it. The handstand hold obviously has the balance skill that you can do with your wrists, elbows, shoulders, back, hips, knees and feet. From the perspective of a clean handstand, I want to calibrate my balance with mostly with my wrists, while the rest contributes to a nice straight body line. And if you aim to hold your handstand for 60 seconds, there's also some strength in form of endurance involved. On the other side of the handstand is the kick up or the going up into the handstand where a lot more movement is happening until you transition into the handstand hold. So now that we have established all the puzzle pieces, we can put them together. In the beginning of the session, I do wrist and shoulder mobility work. I do about two to three sets of those exercises in the beginning. I then do two to three sets of 60 seconds wall work to allocate my attention to a straight body line and good form while also working on my handstand endurance. Next, I would do two to three sets of accumulated 60 seconds freestanding handstands. After that, I work on my handstand kick-up skills. The aim here is not to hold as long as possible, but to find balance keep it just for a moment and then descend in a controlled way. Here I do high repetitions to prompt my nervous system to optimize learning through errors. The number here can vary depending on the level. I usually do 10 successful reps for 6 sets, divided into 2 variations of kicking up. Doing this handstand session 3 times a week catapulted my handstand skills like I never could imagine. The combination of volume and repetition while also working on mobility to maintain healthy and strong joints made the difference for me. The process is simple but not easy. It certainly took and still takes a lot of discipline for me, but building skill is always harder than maintaining it. My journey doesn't end with the 60 second handstand hold. There's much more to learn. So why wait? Do the work. Mm -hmm.